As soon as I saw it, it took my breath away. Iron Horse Lou Gehrig. 6000 or up. No, no, no. The final price could be through the roof. I would be offering about $60,000. A lot of money. We could do a lot with that. Thank you. <laughs> Most true sports fans have something they cherish, from a game they were at, a player they followed, or a team they loved. They live forever in a piece of the game. Presented by Allstate. We're at the National Sports Collectors Convention today, searching for sports treasures and the stories behind them. Some are worth millions, some are just for the memories, and some may be in your closet. Our experts will put a price tag on them. Bidders from around the country are ready to make offers. And the owners, well, will they keep their memories or sell for cold, hard cash? What do you got? This is the holy grail of baseball cards. Honus Wagner's T206 card. They say Honus was against smoking and that's why he went and had it pulled. That's not true. He didn't like people using his likeness and he had it stopped from production because he wasn't getting paid. We'll take three of those. Sold. <laughs> what do you got? I've got the play setting from the Thousand Yard Club. It was a banquet attended by the Thousand Yard Rushers in the NFL from 1966. It was also signed by Vince Lombardi, who was there. My grandfather was an original Green Bay Packer. He played in the 1919 season. He also was the only person ever to break Curly Lambeau's leg. He did that in practice, and he was always very proud of that. What do you got? Well, this flag used to fly above Wrigley Field. My dad got it from his friend, and we have Bobby Cox on it, Andrew Jones, John Smoltz, we're looking to get Hank Aaron, and Tom Glavin. What do you think it's worth? Uh, I don't know, I would never sell it. My dad would probably kill me. Our next item is a very cool item. Pam, where are you from, first of all? Richmond, Virginia area. Richmond, Virginia, and you are bringing us what? This is a Tom Glavin game-used jersey from his 300th win at 2007. And that was at Wrigley Field on Sunday Night Baseball. Yes. Because I was actually at that game <laughs> with my son. Tom Glavin was absolutely outstanding yes, that night. Definitely, yes. Is this the only one he wore in that game? Oh, no. This is, this is actually a unique jersey, and he was changing his jerseys every inning. This one here is marked with the number four, and that indicates that he wore it in the fourth inning of that game. Okay, but it also says 2006, and when I went to that game, it was 2007. You're right on that one. And the, the unique thing about that, and this is, again, what makes it special, not only was it his 300th win, but he was changing them every inning, and because he was changing them so frequently, they ran out of away jerseys for him to wear. But they actually started scrambling to find things and they found some 2006 away jerseys for him to wear so they pulled those out you know put them on and it actually helps make it a more unique collector's item. Tom Glavin won his 300th game in a Mets jersey but he played most of his career with the Atlanta Braves. Glavin is only the sixth left-hander to win 300 games. Glavin wore this baseball jersey but he almost wore a hockey sweater. He was drafted by the National Hockey League's Los Angeles Kings but opted for baseball. All right, Pam, I'd like you to meet Rob. Rob Hi. Steinmetz nice is you. one of the foremost authenticators and appraisers in the okay. sports collectible industry. Is it real and what's it worth? I, I'm excited to see this jersey. It's, it's not every day you get the opportunity to see and, and appraise a, uh, a jersey from such a significant milestone. The back of the jersey actually is where the uh, primary identifier is, and that's the Major League Baseball hologram. When we enter that hologram into the Major League Baseball database, um, it actually shows up as being player collected. That means that Glavin himself retained this jersey, kept it, it wasn't intended for resale or anything like that. It's authentic? Absolutely. What is it worth? Uh, I'd put an auction estimate on it of eight to $10,000. Okay. Conservatively. Okay. Do you have children? Yes, four. <laughs> four kids. <laughs> four kids, eight grand goes a long way. What do you think? I think it's an interesting jersey. I think uh, it is a piece of history, so I, I, I think I'd be interested in possibly making an offer. Does this intrigue you? Yes, it does. I think the, the history behind it is certainly appealing. Mm -hmm. That game, how many jerseys did he wear? Six jerseys are, are the total that was worn during the game. I also understand that one was sent to Cooperstown, so he kept five jerseys from the game for himself. So this is the only one that's been available and all the rest are I not, believe so. not, not been available for sale. 
Pam, I don't want to speak for you, but you said it would take quite an offer yes. for you to part with this. Yes. Okay. So, ordinarily, you know, appraisers can be all over the map. Um, I think Rob's estimate is probably reasonable. Okay. Uh, the challenge is finding the buyer for that. I would be willing to offer $6,000 on the jersey today in cash. Oh, what do you think, Pam? As good an offer as that is, I think we're going to have to hang on to this one because it's a very special piece and not just You're a You're passionate matter. about it. Yes, very definitely. What did you think of the offer today? Yeah, yeah. It was a very good offer. Um, it just it was interesting to find out that that was what it was worth. It would have to be a really blow your socks off kind of offer to do that, even with kids in college. Um, those things are very dear to us, so that's why we ended up passing on it. Hey, what do you got? What we have here is Jerry Lucas's gold medal from the 1960 Olympic Games. It's the first Hall of Famer to ever sell his medal. Jerry Lucas is one of the top 50 basketball players of all time. Won a national championship at Ohio State, won an NBA championship, an incredible Hall of Famer. What do you got? It's a baseball signed by Joe DiMaggio, 1969. He was a hitting instructor for the Oakland A's. I was a bad boy for the White Sox. I was outside the dugout playing catch, flipped him the ball, and he signed it. And he also gave it to Sal Banda, who also signed the ball on the other side. What do you got? I have a poster signed by Dick Fosbury, 1968 gold medalist, first guy to invent going over backwards. He invented the Fosbury flop technique at the Mexico Olympics. Whatever happened to that guy? I'm him. All right, Ariel, you were born in Puerto Rico. You live now in Argentina. And you have a soccer ball here that you acquire. That ball is from 1895. So it's 118 years old. Yes. Tell us how you were able to acquire this. I do like a research of the father founders of football in Uruguay and I found that a, a family from Wesley Pool that is the father founder of football, they have like a mini museum and I bought this ball. Do you have any paperwork that they've given you to say yes this is really 118 year old? Yes, I have some paperwork by the family, I also have some signed documents from that era. Alright, have you ever had it appraised? Uh, no. The game dates back to the second century BC in China. Through the years, some countries even banned it because of the fighting, not just the players, but entire towns. Then in 1863, the British stepped in, established the modern rules, and a soccer association. In fact, the term soccer is short for the word association. Scott, have you had a chance to look at this soccer ball from 1895? Yeah, I did take a good look at it, and uh, it's in a really incredible shape. There's no way this isn't a one-of-a-kind type of piece. This is almost what I call a museum piece. I would put a, a starting value on it of around $6,000. What do you think of that? Is that what you had in your mind, or no? No, no, no. I think it has a, a higher value. How about if I bring someone in from one of the country's leading auction houses? We'll find out if he's right or you're right. OK, perfect. Ariel, this is Mary from Leslie Heinemann Auction House. Nice Hi, to Mary. meet you. Nice All to right, meet Mary, you. Mary, so nice we item. have it. <laughs> Definitely looks 1895, but it's in great condition. Is it something you'd be interested in acquiring from Ariel? Oh, yeah. it would be a great auction piece. I mean, the final price could be through the roof, 15, 20 plus, but you gotta have two people bidding against it. I couldn't start much higher than 8,000. With a piece like this, it's kind of almost one of a kind. What do you think, $8,000? <laughs> no, I... I will not take this the risk. U.S. soccer is now hot. You have 10-game winning streak, and there's too much hype Soccer's now. Soccer's getting pretty good in this it country. Is. Yes, every every week there's some some teams coming from England and from Italy playing. So I think there will be more than three or four bidders interested. If, if the starting price is a, a thousand, I will not sell for that price. I understand that. That's definitely a risky situation with a museum piece like this. I mean. I completely understand the concern. So you think you can get more money for it somewhere else, huh? Yeah, I think so. I think I can get around 20, 30. Really? Yes. I'm really <laughs> excited about my item. Coming up, one of the most rare and valuable autographs in sports. Next, Lou Gehrig's bat, what's it worth, and the baseball great who stopped by to take a swing with it. A piece of the game, brought to you by Allstate, Chicago's own good hands. I'm your son. 
And as you well know, I can barely focus on one thing at a time. So between mowing the lawn and football, I choose football. Sorry, Robert. Five dollars doesn't buy my undivided attention. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you might end up with a financial buzz cut. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? What do you got? Well, I have an album of uh, baseball cards from the 1880s. They were distributed from Old Judge Tobacco Company. In this particular collection, they were all glued into an album, which is the bad part. And the good part is they were all glued into an album, <laughs> which preserved them from causing the photographic images to fade. Got it from the original collector's daughter, which is pretty tough considering they're from the 1880s. She's getting a little old now, isn't she? She's old, but she's sharp. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> what do you got? This is a uh, 1952 Sportsman racetrack uh, horse blanket. I, I don't know which horse may have worn it, but, uh, but it's a really nice old piece. It's older than I am. And it's nice. not as old as me. <laughs> What do you got? I've got a uh, 1979 Leroy Neiman print that's autographed by 51 different players and coaches, many of which were from the Bears, from the 40s through the 70s. I think there's 15 autographs that we haven't identified yet. It's a cool item. I mean, sentimentally, it was given to me by my father. I might consider selling it. You know, my dad always said, Grandma's for sale for the right price. So. <laughs> We're here at the National Sports Collectors Convention, and there are some amazingly cool items here. Some way out of our league. This may be one of them. Dave, you come to us from where? From Newport Beach, California. Okay, and you have a bat here, and as soon as I saw it, it took my breath away because I looked at the name, I looked at the condition, and went, that may be the real deal. Tell us what you have. Four words, Iron Horse Lou Gehrig, game used bat. Here is a Lou Gehrig bat from the era 1936 through 1938. It's uh, 35 inches, 37 and a half uh, ounces, and uh, it's made out of ash, and it's got unbelievable patina. Today we see players, they carry 15 and 20 of them at a game, and they're all up on a rack, and one breaks, they go get it up. He hung on to his bats. Lou Gehrig was known for, if he liked a bat, he would play it. And in, in this case, you can see a lot of game use on here, some notches. And up in this area where the handle is, you can see where the tape was. When, he, when he, there was some separation in the wood, there's some uh, the nails they used to put in the bat, and then they wrap it up. So he, you could tell he loved this bat. Gehrig is the greatest first baseman of all time. He had a 340 average and hit 493 home runs. He and the Yankees won six world titles. In this great shot, he homers to bring in Babe Ruth, who was his idol. But Gehrig's most famous record was playing in 2,130 consecutive games. When the streak ended, he learned he had ALS, soon named Lou Gehrig's disease. And I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to look for. Thank you. Two years later, Gehrig was gone. He was 37. There's also a very worthwhile and interesting backstory yeah. that if this bat were to be sold, where the money goes. You know, like Lou Gehrig and his family, I can only imagine what their family went through when he was ill. The person, a good friend of mine who owns this bat, um, he's from Minnesota, and he's helping out a dear friend who has cancer, mm -hmm. and his family. He didn't want to sell this bat. It took him a long time to find this bat. He's an avid collector. But being the kind of guy that he is, make a long story short, he uh, decided to sell this bat and help a friend. So what a great story so that is. he will donate the money that the sale of the bat generates to help a friend defray medical costs and family expenses. Cancer treatment for, the, for his body and for the family as well. Gehrig's consecutive game streak lasted for 56 years until Cal Ripken Jr. broke it, never missing a game for more than 16 seasons. And this, this is pretty cool, holding this, kind of getting the sensation of what he felt like swinging it. Even the pine tar patterns. You know, when you play the game enough, you're putting pine tar on here, and sometimes you have to, it's built up too much, so you have to take some of it off. So there's a process. So you're kind of connected by thinking, well, you did the same thing I did. 
And these little nicks in the end, you know, that, that makes me the happiest because uh, those were the habits that I had. And, and I, didn't, I didn't know that. And the only way to know that is to pick up his bat and see where his marks are. Yeah, this bat was broken right here. And it looks like uh, to keep the bat going, because we're, we're very superstitious about our bats. You have a, a long hitting streak with it. Would he have played with it after he put nails on it? I think it's possible, yeah. It's, this, this, uh, this fracture is not so bad. Very dense, very heavy, good piece of wood. Yeah, I could hit a home run and BP with this thing. <laughs> Even now. Next, why this autograph could be worth a fortune. I had a nightmare. Hmm? The house caught fire, we were out on the streets. It's only a dream, and we have home insurance. But if we made a claim, our rate would go up. Shh, you did it right. You have all state blame rate cards, so your rates won't go up just because of a claim. Are we still in a dream? No. You're in an Allstate commercial. So get Allstate home insurance with Claim Rate Guard. Good night. There's so many people in our bedroom. Talk to an Allstate agent and let the good life in. Hey, what do you got? Uh, that's an uh, Amo uh, Griffiths fight uh, worn robe. Uh, he wore it in 1966 against Dick Tiger at Madison Square Garden. He won a 15 round decision. He signed it on the, on the pocket here, and uh, it's embroidered, uh, his name on the uh, top. Poor Emil just passed away at the age of 75, so he had a good long life. What do you got? Yeah, I've got a ball stitcher from about the 1920s. All your equipment back then was made either in New Hampshire, Philly, New York, Vermont, Massachusetts. They would implant the ball in, in the vise here, uh -huh. put the uh, skins on it, and then begin lacing it. Handmade balls, now they're all done by machines, I think in Haiti. Looks like something you torture somebody with. Uh, <laughs> what do you got? I have an autographed uh, basketball from uh, a lot of the players from the championship teams of the Chicago Bulls the first three years. Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, Tex Winter, John Paxson, Stacy King, and a few others. Um, I don't know how much this ball's worth, but I'm ready to sell it for $50. You know? yeah. Adam, you bring a very interesting item to us here. What is this? This is a Shoeless Joe Jackson signed album page. Okay, he was a member of the 1919 Black Sox, implicated in throwing the World Series. Right, which to his dying day, he said he had nothing to do with. That's correct. And if you can look at his signature here, you see that it looks very illegible, that he can't write. In fact, he couldn't, he was illiterate. So he had to have his wife or friends show him how to sign his name. All right, so how would you become the owner of an unbelievably iconic signature? Well, this came up for auction a couple of years ago. We saw this item come up and we're enamored by the story. A little girl goes to his liquor store in South Carolina in the 1940s, since he's been retired. She goes up to him and asks him to sign his signature, his autograph on this album page, which he does very slowly. And as you can see, it's in pristine, wonderful condition. All right, have you ever had it appraised? That would be fantastic. He was called Shoeless Joe because he once played a sandlot game in his bare feet. He couldn't read or write because he didn't go to school. He worked to support his dirt poor parents. He was also the greatest natural hitter who ever lived, according to Babe Ruth. But did he help throw the 1919 World Series? Say it ain't so, Joe. All he did was set a World Series record with 12 hits and played flawless in the field. Jackson spent the rest of his life maintaining his innocence and running a small liquor store in South Carolina where his wife signed the checks. All right, Adam, I've brought Joel Alpert from Las Vegas, one of the foremost appraisers in the industry. Hey, Adam, nice hey, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, I've obviously looked at your autograph, and I've looked at the letter that came with it. This autograph here I discussed with Steve Grad, the lead authenticator for PSA DNA, because I wanted to know exactly why they believe it to be a genuine autograph. This is one of the few examples, about 10 or 15, ever seen by Joe Jackson where he wrote it in his own hand and not somebody else signing for him. Now, quite often when he would sign an autograph like this, somebody would sign a copy of his autograph and he would copy it. 
I'm going to say if I have to appraise it, it's probably in the seventy to eighty thousand dollar range. We may have a collector who would be interested in discussing purchasing this from you. Would you have interest in discussing it? Oh, absolutely. So, Chris, are you going to make him an offer? Um, I'm going to try to make him an offer. He certainly can't refuse. All right, Adam, we've got Chris Cavalier, Golden Auctions. Your thoughts? Absolutely, an incredible piece. It's wonderful that you have it. Um, if I were to pay cash for it. Uh, probably, I would be offering about sixty thousand dollars on the side. I can't do sixty. I'm sorry. I need a better price. Can we get you to come up a little bit? Next, will he raise the offer? I'm your son, and as you well know, I can barely focus on one thing at a time. So between mowing the lawn and football. I choose football. Sorry, Robert. Five dollars doesn't buy my undivided attention. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you might end up with a financial buzz cut. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem. Like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? The offer stands at $60,000. I can't do 60, I'm sorry. I need a better price. Can we get you to come up a little bit? As, as an absolute maximum, would be 65. Would, would be where absolute maximum, just so you know, I couldn't go any higher than that. Adam, a lot of money. That is a lot of money. We could do a lot with that, but I'm afraid I can't do a transaction at this time at 65. One thing, you know, an, an alternative, we would be honored and privileged to represent this item in auction. Whatever the market is willing to bear, we will achieve that in an auction. Mrs. Adam has a say in this too, correct? Well, that's right. We're co-owners 50-50 of our business, so we'd have to talk this over before we can make any decisions. Always remember, happy wife, happy life. So the wife is always right. Did he make a good call? Well, I think it was a wise decision to make since Thanks, we're Anne. partners in this business. So, And it is a, such a beautiful, rare piece that I think it's one not to enter into lightly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Best advice I can give is to make sure you have a conversation once a year with your agent. There's a lot of things that happen in your life over the course of a year. Maybe you acquire some new items, some new valuables, or for that matter, you may be downsizing. You could be leaving yourself open to some major challenges down the road if we don't have the proper coverage for you to make sure that your bigger assets are protected. Hmm. The house caught fire. We were out on the streets. It's only a dream. And we have home insurance. But if we made a claim, our rate would go up. Shh. You did it right. You have all state claim rate cards, so your rates won't go up just because of a claim. Are we still in a dream? No. You're in an all state commercial. So get all state home insurance with claim rate card. Good night. There's so many people in our bedroom. Talk to an all state agent and let the good life in. They're still out there, like treasure, a part of the past, under decades of dust, discovered at last. You can follow us at apieceofthegame.tv. Drop us a line and tell us, what do you got? Remembering moments that brought them to fame, they live forever in a piece of the game. A piece of the game, brought to you by Allstate. Are you in good hands?